How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Amatsutsumi. Uh, we're going to school. That's about it. Yeah, so we are now a high school student. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to go back to school. Not really, but uh, we are now assuming the position of a high school student. Whether we're the age or not, we were able to use our Kododama powers to get ourselves enrolled. And it's time for our first day. And we're holding hands with Kokodo for some reason. As you guys could probably see, that is what's being asked. Why are we doing that? We've just arrived at the school gates, and I already see someone I recognize. Morning, Hotaru. What are you doing standing out here? I'm impressed by the large number of students milling around. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to be fine. The more people worry about me, the more I wonder whether I should be worried too. But I'm able to stay calm by remembering that if anything goes wrong, I always have my Kododama power. おいびとができたのかって間違えられたらどうするつもりなのんだって兄さんは兄さんだよ。ホタル以外の人は誠さんのことを知らないじゃないですか。うん。だから聞かれたら兄さんなんだよって自慢してあげるの。おお、what a Oh yeah, definitely nothing to worry about there. Hotaru claps Kokoro on the shoulder and then turns to me. I could have, but I didn't want to rely on her too much. It's better if I'm in a separate class. I don't understand why, but she's grinning now. Anyway, I'd better head over to the staff room soon. So, I will ask the question, as I kind of briefly touched up on this topic as we were entering this episode. How old is Makoto? Do we have, like, any idea so far? I mean, there's been some hints of, like, being called a boy from Azuki, but, you know, I don't know if that really constitutes as much, because somebody that's older and, like, has gone through life is going to definitely call everybody a fucking child. So, how old are we, you know? Are, are we, like, meant to be in this school, or are we kind of doing some sus activities here? After parting ways with Kokoro and Hotaru, I walk towards the staff room with some trepidation. But once I'm inside, it's clear the Kododama from yesterday is still working. I'm glad that magical abilities are just so efficient and just, that they just work. Nobody questions my presence, and after a short wait, my, ho my new homeroom teacher, excuse me, comes to escort me to the classroom. He tells me to stand outside and wait for his signal to come in. Ah, yes, the, the anime trope. I don't know, like, I have absolutely no idea how Japanese schools and classrooms and really the entire education system over there works. So, do they do this? Soon I'll have to introduce myself to my new classmates. I'm nervous. Whew. The one thing I absolutely hate to avoid is saying a Kododama by mistake. How embarrassing would it be to accidentally speak a Kododama in front of dozens of people? After about a minute, I hear the teacher's voice telling me to come inside. Oh wow, this is actually a really nice classroom. Like. It's not just like the standard classroom seat or background. Um, you got a TV. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a huge difference. We still have a chalkboard for whatever reason. But no, this looks this looks fairly modern, actually. As I enter the classroom, I feel everyone looking at me. Oh, I'm so excited. I, I almost forget. I almost forget to be nervous. This is what I always thought a classroom would look like. In the last few days, I've started getting used to seeing crowds of people, but this is the first time I've seen so many people in one place, all around the same age and wearing similar clothes. 
The teacher prompts me. Oops, I forgot. Uh, hello, my name is uh, uh, Oribe Makoto. Uh, for reasons that are hard to explain, I don't know much about living in society, but I hope I can avoid causing too much trouble for everyone. It's nice to meet you all. Uh, who are you? You've got a colored text. You must be important. Someone in the classroom is curious. I trot out my prepared backstory. I've been sickly ever since I was very young, and until very recently I was hospitalized somewhere deep in the mountains away from civilization. A murmur runs through the class. It's the same story I told Ka uh, Kokoro and Azuki-san, but will it work here? Seeing the uncertainty on my face, the teacher claps to get the class's attention. Yeah, be curious for like a couple hours. Several students look like they want to ask something, but they keep quiet. As I make my way over to my assigned seat near the back of the classroom, of course, I hear a girl murmur something. Okay, I was getting a drink, but what the fuck? Why, why is somebody trying to figure out how to spell our name? I don't know how I feel about that. Just like the boy earlier, I didn't see who it was. Oh well. I sit down and run my hands across the smooth surface of the desk. Then I look up. I see many desks and many students' backs. Starting today, this is my new home. I can't wait to see what school has in store for me. Oh yeah, we're gonna hella regret you know, trying to join school. Little did we know it's full of education and learning and homework. That's probably the worst part of, of all of this, is the fact that we're going to be kept busy. After homeroom is over, the students get up from their seats and start chatting with each other. I guess this is what the teacher meant by the next break. But before I can observe more, several students come and surround my desk. Now's their chance to question the new guy. I definitely answer their mostly predictable questions without too much trouble. I don't tell anyone, or I don't tell any obvious or easily discoverable lies. No, I don't know much about TV. No, I don't know much about books or music. Luckily, since I keep saying I don't know things, the students are mostly able to fill in the gaps in my story by themselves. Of course, I always have my Kododama in reserve if anyone gets suspicious. Finally, the students begin to drift back to their seats to prepare for the next class. But one boy remains. Yo, tenko -se. Who the fuck are you? Why do you look like... Now, you don't look hunched over. It's just like for a second, your posture looked really fucked. I guess it's because we're sitting that like he looks really tall. Hello. Okay, this is better. Now that now that we don't have a side profile, this is immediately better. So, Asakawa Koichi. Okay. He looks puzzled and I'm puzzled too. Was there something wrong with how I reacted to you? Sorry, my face isn't very expressive. I'm actually happy that you came and said hi to me. Uh, very. I am, but more than that, I'm just impressed by how lively the class is. I can't help but smile when I see so many people talking freely amongst themselves. I've never seen a place so full of my life. Ah. Why are you apologizing? I see, so that's why he's here at my desk. Come to think of it, his voice does sound familiar. Don't worry about it. He grins. Uh, actually... I'm still far from understanding what's normal here, so there's no doubt that I'll face many challenges while adjusting to my school at l or my life at school. Excuse me. It would be it would be great if I had someone in the class I could go to for help if I needed it. Basically, I need a friend. Of course, I could solve the problem by whispering to Kuichi something like "protect me" or "assist me from now on," but that would make him more more a slave than a friend. Yeah. Hey, Kuichi. Nanda. If you don't mind, would you be my friend? I word it carefully so it doesn't come out as a command. Thanks. 
Huh? Did something surprising happen? So, Jane. Asari is o te kotaita or no otokomaina tokoroni, kando shiro te i terunda. Oh, I am, and that's why I said thanks. Niona yatsu dana. Oh, we're the weird one. He makes an odd face, though it doesn't seem like he's displeased. He might be Jordan at Suji Naiga. Ma, Tokai Karakta, Skasta Yastoka Janaisi, Ika. Oh, no, far from. To you, Yori, Kokuri, Inakara Kuriatsuka, Irunante, Taremo Sozo Stenakata, the Hokedo. There's always a bigger fish, as they say. Stada to Mugana. I was about to say. The place I lived in was pretty nice, actually. I think back to my life in the village. Yeah, it really was a beautiful place. He takes his leave and returns to his seat. Okay. I like this guy, it's just something about his sprite. Just, I don't know, it seems off to me. Maybe I'm not used to seeing a dude in this game so far. That was kind of our first one, huh? I've already met several girls outside the village, but Kuichi is my first male friend. Friendship. This will be great. A smile rises to my lips. Well, that aside, it's time to experience my first class. Since I've never taken a class before, I know it'll take a while to get my bearings. But I'll still look forward to it. I'm looking forward to it as well, buddy. I'm sure it'll be a fun experience. That wasn't fun at all. That sucked. After enduring four hours of classes, I've collapsed face down onto my desk. I knew I'd be far behind the rest of the class, but I never imagined how painful it would be to sit in silence listening to gibberish for hours on end. In fact, since I was a farmer until a few days ago, sitting down for so long is itself a new concept to me. The second period, math was especially bad. There were a bunch of foreign symbols like X and Y, haha. <laughs> And I could barely even tell them apart from each other. Yeah, they're actually really similar. <laughs> I'm further behind than I thought. I have to learn to read and write all over again. I'm frustrated by how unprepared I was for this. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that myself. I was just kind of thinking on like the overall idea of school. It's more than just like, oh, social life, friends, maybe relationships. But yeah, I mean, there's also, you know, Sitting in class for literally hours, not being able to move around much, taking notes, preparing for tests, homework, projects. Oh man. Maybe if I use a teensy weensy Kododama on the teacher, make him give me a one on one crash course. Nah, that'd be too disruptive. I'm going to school because I wanted to experience being a student. Studying is part of that. Still, until my foundational knowledge catches up with the class, I'll need to use my Kododama to get around things like exams or being called on. Okay, now it's lunchtime. Koichi said he'd show me around the campus, but maybe I'll ask him if he has any tips about how to remember all these foreign words, or which ones I should focus on. Who the fuck are you? And why am I interested? Huh? After lifting my head off my desk to look for Koichi, I accidentally make eye contact with someone else. That's not so unusual. People have been glancing at me all day. It's only natural that I'd be on people's minds as a new transfer into the class. But this girl is standing right in front of me, and she's absolutely gorgeous. That's what I'm saying. Her beauty reminds me of the lush green mountains that surrounded our village, or of a clear mountain stream dotted with mossy boulders. And then there's a certain voluptuousness, yeah, which doesn't really fit with the metaphor. I feel a strange desire to bully her. Wait, where did this one come from? Why do we need to bully her? That's not at all what I was thinking. Maybe it's because of how she's already blushing with embarrassment, even though we haven't spoken a word to each other yet. Anna? Yes. I fight down my odd sadistic impulse. Yeah, that was very strange and answer her normally. Nice to meet you. Hmm? I'm surprised that anyone could be even worse at talking than I am. Well, I guess I'll just stay quiet and let her finish. Wait, could this be the Shrine Maiden? I can't remember what she looked like, to be honest. Oh, fuck. 
That's okay. You don't have to be nervous. I'm curious as to what she's trying to say, but it's also fun to watch her struggle to say it. God damn. That's just mean. Is this the same way that Mana feels when she torments, uh, torments me? Good question. Koichi shows up. Good question, yeah. <laughs> the girl looks even more flustered. Koichi, any idea what she might be trying to say? Yeah. Okay, so he does at least know who she is. I see. It's clear now that she's generally bad at communicating with people. Don't worry, so am I. Yet I work in a, a position that requires a lot of communication, and I sit here and speak for almost an hour straight in a recording session. Oh no. So why would she come here and try to strike up a conversation with me? asayina san suddenly raises her voice and grabs me by the wrist, hey, yo. Before I can react, she rushes out of the classroom, pulling me with her. Alright, where's this going? Uh, asayina san She looks around worriedly and doesn't seem to have heard me. Because we're all on our lunch break, the hall outside is even more crowded than inside the classroom. She scurries down the hall. And of course, we're in tow. I follow her lead, enjoying the feel of her soft fingers on my wrist. She stops in front of a door and takes out a key. I look up, wondering what sort of room this is. A placard above the door says Library Prep. Huh. Once the two of us are alone inside the poorly lit room, she finally lets go of my hand and breathes a sigh of relief. She even leans against a bookshelf and slides down to the ground, an apparent exhaustion. I look around the room. It smells like musty old books. Yeah, this is... this is like a club room, isn't it? Is it? There's no way this is like a full-on, like, library room. It looks like maybe this is like backup books or some shit? I see... This is some kind of room for storing books. Yep, there we go. I've heard of a library, so if this is library prep, I guess that means it's where they keep excess books, or books that haven't been categorized yet. I could almost drool at the amount of knowledge that must be stored in this room. Yeah, it's actually pretty badass. So, is this room not open to everyone? I saw that you used a key to unlock it. Oh, nice. Extracurricular activities like committees, clubs, and sports. These are social groups where friendship and love between students can grow. Awesome. She looks at me curiously. Yeah, books are like bundles of knowledge. Oh, I like novels and manga, too. As I answer, I pick up a nearby book and brush the dust off the cover. In a sense, it's all thanks to books that I was able to leave the village in the first place. So this what is with this character? Huh. Hi? Nothing, I just noticed that you finally smiled. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, I didn't mean anything bad, I just thought that you looked cute, that's all. I'm not flattering you. I really think you're cute. Although, I might just think differently from other people since I grew up away from civilization. Yeah, see, that doesn't exist in the real world. If you're cute, you have friends. And, and all anime girls that we have come across so far in this game definitely have friends. So, so what does that tell you? Oops, now she's sad again. And that cute smile is gone now. What a shame. Personally, I think you should try not to speak so harshly about yourself. I try to be as tactful as I can. Well, whether or not it's the truth, the fact that the, the words can have a big impact on people's behaviors and mental states. Yeah, we've seen that before, huh? At the very least, I think you should avoid using words that put people down. And that goes for yourself and others. Ah, shucks. Well, I was taught from an early age to be very careful with my words. She nods quickly. 
Yep, but sorry for distracting you. There must have been something you wanted to talk to me about, right? She brushes aside her heavy bangs and rubs her forehead. A pleasant fragrance wafts my way as she does so. The scent of her shampoo cuts across the musty smell of the books and I remember. I haven't slept with a woman for just about a week. What a rough time, buddy. What a rough fucking time. She looks up at me questioningly. Huh? I cock my head at the strange question. To be real with you guys, the way that he actually made a friend right there is quite literally how I've made friends throughout high school, college, and university. Not by like explicitly asking them, hey, do you want to be buddies? But more like, like, do you want to work on this together, stay in contact, and then you just work through the semester together or the school year or whatever, and then maybe just maybe you stay in contact and boom, there you go. You, you've made a friend. I don't know if it's that quick of a process or that long of a process, but you just kind of do it. You just get to it. Well, she must have overheard my conversation with Kuichi this morning. Don't you have any friends, Asina-san? Hi. Her face visibly falls, and an air of gloom sets about her. Well, why don't I become your friend? Eh? Personally, I'd love to have as many friends as possible. If you want to be friends with me, I'm all for it. Uh, yeah, it's not that I really wanted to be your friend, I just want to know how to make friends. Method. What is she talking about? Wait, is there some kind of special ritual or procedure to have to go through in order to become friends with someone? I look at her in confusion, and she looks back at me confused too. And there we go. If there's some kind of condition I don't satisfy for being your friend, you can feel free to turn me down. Okay, then I guess we're friends now. She smiles. I'm glad I got you to smile again. Inadvertently, yes. Yep. When I see someone who's happy, I feel happy too. But Asahina-san goes back to looking trouble. No, not at all. I wasn't joking at all. Koichi was saying I don't react to things in a normal way. I wonder, do I come across as dishonest or something? If so, that's a big problem, and I need to fix it as soon as possible. Straightforward. Is that not normal? Yeah, everybody is supposed to get the wrong idea by what you say. That's how it works. Huh. Well, that's very interesting. Personally, I find it more difficult not to match what I say with what I want to say. I mean, I know how to lie, of course, but I don't think that's what Asina-san is talking about. As an example, if I wanted a friend, I'd just go and ask someone to be my friend. But are you saying that's not how people normally think? Why is that difficult? But what's embarrassing about it? Oh, you don't have to think so hard about it. I'm just asking out of curiosity. I'm not trying to interrogate you. She thinks for a little while. Yeah, 
I see. Basically, you like yourself, but you don't want to find out that others don't like you? She replies instantly. Really? Honestly, that's kind of how I felt whenever I was in high school, or at least like the first couple of years. It kind of builds, and things just become a lot easier. And then college and university, you kind of have the confidence because you accept who you are. If you're an asshole, you accept that you're an asshole. But you still go about the right way to, you know, live life, to get through everything. I don't know. Is that a terrible example? I don't know. Huh, so your first theory was that it's hard because you don't want yourself to be hurt. But your second theory was that it's hard because you don't want other people to be hurt. Just be selfish like me and one problem is taken care of. Huh. I think both those feelings come from a place of kindness, though. I wasn't trying to make you feel better. I was admiring you. Well, you're welcome. I don't think I've done anything worth thanking me for, but it's important to accept thanks in a graceful way. She sighs deeply. By the way, you don't have to call me Oribe-kun, excuse me. You can just call me Makoto. Oribe isn't even my real name, so it feels weird to be called that. Plus, it's too ambiguous since Kokoro and Azuki-san are Oribe's too. The wrong idea? She shakes her head violently, blushing deeply for some reason. If you're okay with it, Asina-san. Remember guys, this is like a really big deal in Japan, I think. I don't know. Kyoko. Huh? Told you. Basically makes people quiver. You don't like it? Asina-san, no Kyoko, puts her hands to her chest and looks away. Her name alone is reminding me of an anime. I think it's Kyoko. I could be totally wrong. Maybe, maybe it's also Kyoko? No, Kyoko sounds better. It's the anime where it's like a group of four friends and like a literature-esque club and they like solve mysteries or some shit there's two boys two girls um damn i really wish there was more to it because i really feel like there could have been something a little deeper from it but it was a good show if you guys know what i'm talking about she's muttering something to herself but i think back to what she said a minute ago you said i was confident but a lot of people tell me that and i wonder why kokoro said it and hotaru and kuichi and now kyoko being natural. Shrine? Aha! Yeah. Not only do I remember the shrine, but I also remember that when I went on a walk there the other morning, I saw a shrine maiden. The shrine maiden didn't exactly get a good look at me, though, since she fled almost instantly. But I guess that must have been Kyoko. Well, if she doesn't remember meeting me, I suppose there's no point in bringing it up. Oh, 
もろもろの間がごと罪汚れあらんおば払えたまえ清えたまえと申すことを聞こしめせとかしこみかしこみも申せふん<笑>恥ずかしいから普通に口にしたけど払え言葉の最後の方かしこみかしこみとかは聞いたことあるでしょ I see But I'm actually thinking about something else. When she recited from the. Ah,、oh, fuck. The Harae Kodoba just now, I felt a trace of something similar to our Kododama power in her voice. While we inherited this power from the gods directly, she and her fellow shrine maidens, or er, she and her fellow shrine maidens, excuse me, and priests, must have attained a semblance of it through the long development of their religious cultural system. I wonder. Could a shrine maiden like Kyoko be unaffected by my Kododama just like Hotoru is? Now I have to know. Let me try something. I face Kyoko and silently extend my right hand. As I expected, she flinches and retreats slightly from me. Don't move. She freezes no, difficult, or no differently than if she were just following my instructions. But the confusion in her eyes shows that she didn't freeze of her own free will. I guess it works on her. I'm relieved, but now I'm even more curious. Why on earth doesn't it work on Hotaru? Anyway, I can't just stand here now. I reach forward and brush Kyoko's cheek gently, excuse me, <clears throat> and then flick my hand to the side. I think you must have been sweating from being nervous. There was a hair stuck on your cheek. There really wasn't, but I step back and flash her a smile. Sorry to have surprised you. You can move now. <laughs> Her body free to move again, she jumps backwards. And then. Uh, what the fuck? She crashes into the bookshelf behind her, and a shower of books falls down on her. Thank you, game. Just, just, just thank you. Thank you for this lovely scene here. Are you okay? Also, just、uh, gonna point this out. When we have these sort of shots here, they are going to be covered up. YouTube has given me one hell of a time for like a bunch of stupid reasons, so just, just gotta roll with it, you know? I don't take no risks no more here. She's too shocked to remove the book that's resting on her head. She's fallen down to a sitting position and her underwear is visible. Oh, yeah, I've definitely seen this situation in manga before. Are you hurt? Well, that's because I put a Kododama on her, but she seems to think it was caused by her nervousness. She's blushing deep red, and even though she hasn't been exercising, she's breathing heavily. She must not be used to the opposite sex. After all, anyone without a single friend must be a virgin. Can you stand? I guess there's no need to stand up. Sitting down is fine too. <laughs> Kyoko coughs a little. It's pretty dusty in here, isn't it? Want me to help? Just let me know when and I can help. Hey, we're friends now, so there's no need to hold back if you need something. Actually, in return, would you mind letting me use this room? Just once in a while is fine. Of course, I want to read the books that are in here too. Well, as many as possible, anyway. Thank you. I smile and extend my hand to her. Have you calmed down now? Let's go back to the classroom. Hi. She takes my hand and gets to her feet. She really does smell nice. By the way, I did have one last question. Well, I guess it's my first question. I can tell that you're a shy person. But how come that didn't stop you from coming and talking to me? 
You were saying that you find it difficult to go and talk to people, and that's why you've never made any friends. So what was different about me? Is that all? Her expression becomes vacant. No, it's not that. She's just not exactly looking at me anymore. It's like she's looking at a point somewhere behind me. I turn around to see if anything is there, but there's nothing but bookshelves. No, you can't say that. Now I'm more curious. Flustered, she starts pushing on my back. Hey, that's dangerous. Don't... I cut myself off, realizing that if I'm not careful, don't push me might come out as a kododama. So I'm helpless as she pushes me all the way out the door. What was she looking at anyway? Oh, I wonder. Maybe there's something on us and we don't even realize it? Maybe? After the strange lunchtime incident with Kyoko, not much else had happened. Before I knew it, it was time for afternoon homeroom, and then just like that, my first day at school came to an end. My main impression so far is... This is tiring. As I sit with my head down at my desk, bathed in the noise of my classmates getting ready to leave, I hear my phone beep. Let's see, uh, here, reply. Fumbling a bit, I managed to type out thanks, I'll be there soon, and send it. I spent all of lunchtime with Kyoko, so I never got a chance to tour the campus. But that can wait for tomorrow. Yo, tenkousei. My name's Makoto. Makoto. Oh shit, I'm actually kind of down for that. Oh sorry, I just got a text from my little sister inviting me to go walk home with her. I held up my cell phone. Do you know Kokoro? Did she stick in your mind because she's so cute, maybe? Oh. Well, it's not like there weren't any girls in the hospital, too. Of course, I'm really thinking about the village, not that it matters. Oh, right. I pick up my bag. Koichi, thanks for making friends with me today. See you again tomorrow. A connection. Connections are good things to have. I hear another voice nearby. Yeah. Koichi glances briefly at Kyoko and walks away. She watches him go. They're both acting weird. Kyoko. Is Koichi's girlfriend you by any chance? <laughs> She's so surprised that she literally jumps into the air. Oh, fun. Those, those are always good times. Oh, I guess you must be pretty close with him if you know so much about it. I see. Anyway, did you want something? She hesitates. I would let her take her time, but Kokoro is waiting for me downstairs. Let's take a... Let's talk while we walk, okay? You don't have to be so formal about it. Huh. Huh, we say. Oh, where are we walking? Uh, worry about that in the next episode. That was a terrible fucking ending, but... Or a way to transition to a conclusion. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll end it there. And I guess in the next episode, we'll wrap up day one of school. And, uh, maybe something else will pop up. I have absolutely no idea where this story is going to be heading into, or what direction exactly, because... What else are we going to be trying to accomplish now? I mean, just living a normal life, I guess? 
I don't know. I have absolutely no idea what direction this is going in, but I was, uh, I was talking a little bit in my Discord, and also just the YouTube comments, just seeing what people were saying. But, you know, it's, um, it's weird, just this kind of situation. It's very unique, because we're kind of squeezing ourselves into a family, and now we're squeezing ourselves into a school, and it's just, it's very different. I'm both excited to see where things are gonna go, but also very, very scared. I'm very worried for things to come in, 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 the same, in the same way, I think. But anyways, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.